Hello and welcome to Auto Animals. My name's James and today we're going to be reviewing the first generation Nissan X-Trail. So this particular model is a special edition Columbia sportswear model. Uh, so it means it comes with uh, sat nav rather than leather, leather seats and it comes with 17 inch alloys which you would normally only get on a top spec model. It's got the ski spoiler thing so you can put skis and stuff in it. Not, I never understand quite why they put that on 4x4s so I'm totally honest with you because how often do you exclusively take a 4x4 skiing? in the UK. First impressions when you see it is you kind of think, oh, it's, it's big, it's boxy, it's angular. You're gonna think it's quite a big car. Actually, it's actually shorter than a Mondeo. So most soft roaders are basically just big, bloated, silly versions of the cars they're based on. Look at the Ford Cougar and the RAV4. They're based on the, what, the Toyota Orifice, or Auris, whatever you want to call it, and the Ford Focus. Um, they're just sort of bloated, silly versions of the regular cars. Nissan had a clever trick in the early 2000s. They discontinued the Almira and the Primera to make way for this and the Qashqai, which made perfect sense. And as a result, the X-Trail is one of the most popular soft roaders you can get these days, as well as being one of the most reliable and best spec cars in its class. As a result, they really retain their value very, very well. So being an off-roader, an SUV, as the Americans might call it, it's got a very flat back, which is ideal for when you're parking and when you're driving it around, you, you tend to feel when you see the back, the back is the back. There's no great big lump sticking out the back of it, like a BMW X6, for example. One of the big downsides, though, that I found with this car is if you do want to go off-road, the exhaust is incredibly low. Not just the actual tailpipe, but the actual back box as well sits very low sideways across the bottom of the car. It's not a massive problem when you're going off-road, because it is capable of going off-road, but you need to be a bit more wary, a bit more careful, especially when you're going over rutted tracks, as the middle of the car will be going over the higher part of the rut, and that's what it's going to hit. So getting its uh, off-road DNA from the rest of, uh, rest of Nissan's rage, from the rest of Nissan's heritage, um, the seats, rear seats do fold down completely flat, and it's also wipe clean as well. Uh, there's lots of little eye, eye hooks as well, to, to bungee cords and for tying rope down, so it is, it is like a proper off-roader inside, really. You can throw anything in there without worrying about too, making too much mess. Now, in order to get that completely flat loading bay, you put the squabs up first. <laughs> pull these little tags up the top here and the seats effortlessly fold flat and you've got a completely flat loading bay fantastic okay so there's a decent amount of space in here to be fair um it's pretty airy it's pretty large in here really uh even for someone of my stature um it does have up down and uh oh has it got you now hasn't got you now. <laughs> so because of the positioning of the, uh, the center console, there's these quite handy little uh, cubby holes at the top here. Uh, there's cup holders on both sides as well, which makes things a lot easier. Um, decent sized glove box and uh, second box as well, which has got the DVD player for the uh, navigation system uh, and a little shelf for things. There we go. Um, I do quite like the fact that there's an air vent right in front of the driver because those dials aren't there. There's a perfect air vent to get air into your face. Um, you, so given this isn't actually a top spec model, you do get a lot of kit with it. I mean, we're talking about climate control, cruise control, all four electric, electric windows. Uh, the driver's one's got auto up and down. We've got a sat nav that's not touch screen, folder and electric mirrors. It's a decent amount of kit. Uh, we've got what looks like little um, barn doors, but they're not a little uh, vanty, oh, stiff. Oh, flipping neck. Draw things to get in there. There's a, oh, cracky, quite a big cubby hole. Something sticky at the back there, lovely. Um, you've got the ashtray. Um, there's a cigarette lighter down there, which obviously can be used as a power socket, but there is a power socket in here as well, if you need to. The, uh, the cup holders and the center console space are actually air conditioned as well. There's little switches, just, uh, in the sides there, you can have it open or shut depending on whether you want the air conditioning to go into it to keep your cans cool, which is a brilliant idea. Um, there's also the leather pack on here as well. So we've got a leather steering wheel, leather gear stick and leather handbrake. I do like the very big panoramic sunroof you've got in here as well though. It's a huge expanse of glass which just totally changes the characteristics of the car when you're driving it. It feels like almost like a topless car really. It's really nice. Uh, the only problem is when you're driving and you want to pull it back, it's quite a reach back to get oh, all the way back across. 
The only problem with that huge bit of glass is that because it's such a massive expanse where the sun's going to be, you get a huge amount of glare on the sat nav and the screw and the dials. Uh, again, because of where they are, which is a bit of a pain, really. So the top spec model also comes with Safari style lights that are mounted to the uh, the front rail on on the roof, uh, which you can control from the inside. Which of course everybody needs to picking up the kids on a summer's afternoon, and just in case a herd of wildebeest fall out in the road being followed by a dog and a man shouting Fenton. There's also about a decent amount of space in the back as well and I see now if I can sit behind myself. Oh dear. You can just about, bear in mind I'm quite a large chap and you know six foot one and a half, I can just about sit behind myself but I am pressing up against the chair. Now if there was someone short sitting in front of me or someone with not quite the same girth it might be fine but um a little bit disappointing, really. I mean, I've, I've sat in the back of, of, of small family cars and super minis. I've had more space than this in the back. Uh, headroom's not bad, but I don't know if it's because of the way I'm sitting, but my head is rubbing on the ceiling. Um, a lot of that's got to do with the sunroof, though, because this portion of the car is lower because there's uh, glass goes in there when the sunroof goes back. So now we've checked out the inside, let's go take it for a drive. One of the first things I noticed is a little quirk with this car when I first got on it is they've got put all the all the centre con central binnacle of all the dials is right in the centre rather than putting it in front of the driver it's it's bang slap in the centre. Reason being is it's a cost cutting exercise. It makes it much easier when they move from left to right hand drive um, and when they change between markets. The only downside is you do have to get used to the fact that everything's over there, not there. It handles like a regular car. I mean, compared to other 4x4s. I don't feel like I'm sitting on top of a tank or anything. It feels like, you know, it, it's, it's still reasonably direct. Um, the, the steering's not too fluffy or anything. The, 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 there's a bit of a, you know, sneeze spot in the middle where you can wibble it and I'm not, nothing's really happening. Road noise is not actually too bad, actually. It's, I mean, you hear the engine considerably, uh, especially with the, with the low gear range, you hear it quite a bit. But um, with regards to the general noise in the car when you're driving, it's not really that bad. Um, I tend to, like I said, I tend to hear the engine rather than the road, um, which, if I'm totally honest, is noise I'd much rather hear. Um, and we're now getting up to a you know, dual carriageway speed, we're now doing 55. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's all right. It's, I'm not having to shout, you know, it's, it's a reasonable volume, it's all right. Okay, so we're, we're coming up to a roundabout now, and it doesn't feel, I, I, with, with regards to going around corners and the like, it doesn't hold as well as a regular car. It does roll a little bit as I'm going to this corner. It's not, actually it's not that bad actually, if I'm totally honest. I mean, compared to, I normally drive a Punto day to day and it, it doesn't actually feel much different from that at the moment. Um, there's a hole, we're going to go right around the roundabout up here and this will give us a good indication as to the kind of, uh, kind of roll. Nope, so that's pretty precise, very tight line. Yeah, that, that, that handled that pretty well to be fair. So it is, Again, because it's a soft road, it is like driving a car. Um, there is a lot of car-based elements with it. It's, it's, <laughs> it is like driving a big car with stilts, which is fine. That's exactly what you want in this kind of car. You, you want to feel like you're driving a car, but have the capabilities of off-road as well. Look behind a cyclist on a blind corner. Get a car! So overall, it's decent acceleration in this car. It does, you know, you put your foot down and it will go. Um, apart from the very short first gear, the rest of the gears have got a pretty decent amount of grunt in them um, with regards to acceleration and the like. So the one we've got here is a 2.2 litre turbocharged diesel um, with a six speed manual gearbox. Uh, acceleration is not bad. We're currently in fourth gear doing 40 miles an hour, foot down at 60 zone. And there's still a fair bit of grunt in there. We're now doing 50 and 60 and that's still still a lot of oomph left after that i feel like it would keep going um which is fantastic that's what you really want in a car like this is you want to be able to you you want the extra torque you want the extra power um braking's not bad as well so the four-wheel drive system in this car is what's called a viscous four-wheel drive system now i'm not very technical i don't actually know what that really means but the idea being is it can differentiate the different amounts of power to the front and rear wheels as and when it's required so what that means in realistic terms is that if you're just gently pulling away a junction, it'll put, say, 10% of the power to the back wheels. But if you're actually gunning it off-road and you really need you know, decent traction all round, it'll put 50-50 split between the two. Um, if needs be, you can also lock the four-wheel drive system for heavy-duty work if you need to have it on permanently. 
the only downside with having a viscous uh, system though is that if it does, if you are using it permanently and too much, if it gets too hot, um, it will unlock itself again um, to stop it overheating. Now, most people would end up using soft rotors for, well, just that, they are soft road use. So they are usually used on the road, 99% of the time. And if there's a slight half inch of snow once a year, you won't freak out. Um, so as a result, most of the miles these kind of cars are going to be doing is going to be motorway miles, dual carriageway driving, a lot of town driving. Some people may use it for dropping off kids at school. As a result, it is the kind of car I feel like I could do a long distance in. It's, it's comfortable, uh, the seat condition's good, I don't feel like, I feel like I could, I could go for hundreds of miles without really having any major problems really. So if you want a decent sized family car but you don't want a whacking great SUV, this car is perfect. It sits right in between the two. Um, it gives you a decent amount of space, decent amount of ride room. It will go off road just fine, but it acts and handles and in some ways even looks a little bit like a regular family car, just a bit bigger. It would be an ideal choice for best of both worlds. It's not quite a crossover. It's nearer to the proper off-road or 4x4 market than, than one of those soft road crossovers, but it's of all the, all the soft roaders out there, it's one of the tougher, nearer to being real 4x4 ones. So, that was the review of the Nissan X-Trail. Uh, my name's James for Auto Animals, and uh, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. We'll see you soon.